Hello everyone and welcome back to the Yellow Dog 3D Tips blog. Today we're going to be having a look at how we can make some animated fur using XGen in Maya. So as you can see I've just got this scene with a rotating sphere in it and this is what we're going to be attaching our dynamic fur to. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go to the playback options and change the playback speed to play every frame. And this is just so that um, our end hair later um, simulates properly. So I've just changed the workspace to the XGen workspace and I've selected the sphere and clicked create new description. So I'll just give this a meaningful name here. So I'll just call that uh, uh, sphere fur 01. And we also need to name our uh, collection as well. So I'll just call that sphere fur. I've just changed it to groomable splines and I've hit OK. And there we go. Thank you for watching. This has been the Yellow Dog 3D Tips blog. I'm just joking, obviously. Um, let's sort this fur out and make it look a little bit more realistic. So if we just go over to the eye icon and click update preview automatically, we'll be able to see a little bit easier what we're doing. So I've just upped the density there um, to 100. I'm just lowering the width here. Um, sometimes you might need to press it again to get it to refresh. Um, I'll, change, I'll up the density massively, so I'll put that to a thousand, and this is starting to look um, like I wanted it to look. Um, I've turned the visibility of those guides off, so we can just see the um, X Gen, and um, maybe I can up that density more. Yeah, so 1,200 looks alright. Um, and I'm just going to change the length. I want slightly longer hair. Sometimes you have to turn the visibility of the guides back on to get it to update um, live in the viewport. But I'm going to turn that back off now so we can begin to affect the taper. So if we go over to the primitives tab, um, you see that we've got a taper option. So I'll just zoom in into the end of the hair to see what effect that's having. And as you can see, when we up the taper, um, the hairs begin to taper off um, like a natural hair. And we can control where this taper um, happens by changing the uh, taper start slider. So I'll just go back over to the grooming uh, tab and go to the pose. And I'm just going to start to brush this hair down. And I'm just going to brush this hair down into a good starting point. But um, to do that, it's probably easier to put the uh, guides back on. And I've just hidden the X Gen by pressing the little um, eye with the um, sort of cross on it next to the main visibility. And I've just turned off preview automatically just so we can begin to brush these down in the viewport. So like I said, I'm just roughly creating a starting point where the hairs already look like they've dropped down um, because of gravity. Um, this can be a little bit tricky using these brushes. Sometimes you might have to switch between the pose and the bend brush, but I'm just doing this super roughly. And I'm pretty much just creating any old start point. I just want the hairs to look like they've dropped a little bit. And this looks pretty awful right now, but it won't matter because we're going to add some noise to it. Um, maybe I'll go to the bend brush and try and bend these top fluffy sections down. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be adding a noise um, modifier in a second. And that's going to sort of just um, sort of give a bit of randomness to the hairs. Um, so just going to go around the outside. And that'll do, I think. I don't think there's much point in doing any more. So I'll just hide the guides again so we're going to see what the X-Gen's doing. And that's pretty much what I was looking for. Looking fine. So I'll go over to the modifiers and I'll add a noise modifier. And as soon as we add this, it's going to look a lot more organic. Um, I might need to put preview automatically on. Yep, there we go. So all this is doing is uh, using a noise pattern to create a bit of randomness in the hair. You can change the frequency down um, to uh, match the sort of look that you want. Um, and this magnitude scale, this is um, the magnitude from the root to the tip. So you can add more noise at the root if you want and maybe tone down the tip, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to put the tip to around half halfway. And I'll turn the magnitude down to 0.5. Uh, maybe 0 0.75, yeah there we go. Um, we've got a nice raggedy looking furball and I'm going to add another modifier and that's a clumping modifier and nothing's going to happen straight away and that's because we need to set up the maps so I'll just click set up maps and I'm going to click generate and you'll see it's created these yellow guides and this is where the clumping is going to happen so clumping just when the hair sort of sticks together a little bit maybe there's a little bit of grease or oil in the hair and adjusting that density is going to create more clumping points so I've just created a really nice dense amount of clumping and you can see it's had an effect now you can change the clump scale from the root to the tip just like we did with the noise um, so I'll just affect that and just create a look um, which I want. So I want a little bit of clumping but not too much and that's looking pretty good, that's pretty much all I want. If you want we can add uh, some randomness to this so I've just added um, a noise value of 1 and again you can change the magnitude of the uh, root and the tip and that's just going to uh, sort of randomly uh, move the clumping points um, just disturb them a little bit and make it look a little bit more organic. So now's the fun part, we're going to add our Anim Wires modifier in and all this Anim Wires modifier is going to do is create a Maya dynamic hair system, um, the one that's built in and we can use this to tie that um, dynamic animation to our X-Gen system. So I'll drop that in and nothing's going to happen straight away and that's because we need to set up the maps and um, we can use this um, density 
um, slider to create more of these control points. So each of these um, yellow control points represents where an N hair is going to be created. And obviously you don't want as many as the um, X gen hairs, because um, each of these will sort of animate a radius around it. Um, so I'll just click create there once I've got a nice dense amount of them and I'm going to click create hair system and I'll just reset the settings um, so what we need to do is click snap curves to base surface and collide with mesh so that the hairs don't go through the mesh and this might take a second or two to load because uh, it's basically creating a load of dynamic hairs so that was actually done pretty quickly and you can see all these hairs are already in there and we need to click attach hair system and it's a good idea to do this now and just save um, because it can get a little bit laggy from this point so we just need to turn off update preview automatically and hide the extra by clicking this button and what I'm going to do is go to the outliner and hide the follicles so we can just see the dynamic hairs and um, if I hit play you'll see that these just start to simulate straight away and it's doing a pretty good job but I think we can make these look a little bit nicer they're, they're a bit too floppy um, so what I'll do is go to the hair system, go to the attributes editor and go to uh, dynamic properties and I'm just going to up the stretch resistance and the compression resistance a little bit, we don't want them stretching too much and I go down to the forces and I'm just going to up this damping and the damp slider basically stops them being as dynamic, it sort of slows them down a little bit and I've just hit play to see where we're at and this is looking pretty good yep there's not as much motion um, but that's sort of what I was looking for so I'll just leave these settings as they are for now and um, this is gonna work and I'm gonna go over to the XGen system and I'm gonna go back to the start and if I um, just click the XGen update um, button you'll see it's actually worked straight away you might run into a bug where the sort of dynamic hairs are having no effect on the X-Gen but I found um, sometimes just going back to the first frame and unchecking the checkbox next to anim wires and checking it again that can sometimes fix the bug otherwise you might have to just delete the modifier and start again but in this case it's worked straight away so you might have noticed that some of the extra hairs aren't being affected um, by the dynamic simulation and that's because maybe there wasn't enough end hairs created but we can do a, um, a little quick fix and that's with this interpolation value so I've just set that to 0 0.5 like it tells you to and each of these end hairs basically has a radius around it of which it can dynamically affect the extra if there's not enough hairs in an area the, um, the extra fur is just not going to follow along so you can up the interpolation for it to sort of widen the radius of effect that the end hairs are having if that makes sense um, but this is started to look like it's going to work pretty well um, so it's a good idea to save your project now um, just before we begin play blasting as it can sort of cause a lot of crashing when you play blast um, so actually what I'm going to do is um, click update preview automatically next to the uh, sort of refresh window and it might be a good idea if you're just looking for a quick preview to lower the density at this point as it can um, definitely cause some crashes if the density is too high so I'll just save that before I begin play blasting so just set up your play blast however you want I'm just using a quick time h264 so I'll just report back when this is finished so here we are we've got our play blast now I did run into some crashing um, on the first attempt so all I did was come back and reduce the density to 800 and it did the trick so I hope you'll agree that was a really nice and easy process to follow. It only took around 8 minutes and we left with this really good looking simulation. Um, if you want to render this, it actually comes with a shader sort of built into the um, X-Gen uh, fur and it works with Arnold straight out of the box. So all you need to do is just tweak a little bit of the settings in that and you can end up with a really, really realistic looking hair simulation. But once again, thank you for watching. This has been the Yellow Dog 3D Tips blog. Stay tuned for more 3D tips. Cheers.